Uh, uh, now for the other weird bit of uh, news while we were off on tangent land. Um, I mean, you you, t you talked about this. Linux, uh, Linus finally has his U.S. citizenship that he never really saw the need to go get. What I find most interesting about this is there's people bashing on Linus for having done this. I, I, I'm just... People, do you have nothing better to do? That's... He lives here. His his kids are U.S. citizens. It's not... I mean, basically he's filling out paperwork just to make legalese easier. He didn't renounce his other citizenship. Did, did he? I mean, he just... I, I don't believe so. Did yeah. anything in the articles I read? Yeah, so it, it's... Uh, like, what, what do we get in that world? How dare you become a U.S. citizen? What's the matter with you? <laughs> when did we wind up in that world? <laughs> ah. <laughs> I, I, I want to know. I, I, I can't, like, get... I, I, I don't know. Basically, they're just bashing on him. It's, um, like... But I think it's, it's usually more a bashing on the, the general portion of being a U.S. citizen, because... I mentioned it in my IRC channel, and there were several people, non-U.S. people, that were uh, just talking about being a U.S. citizen not being a good thing. Uh, no, nothing really specific, just, you know, all he was finished before, and uh, I think that's right. My brain's not, not completely awake, but uh, so, something about how it's taking a step down the food chain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, I'll be the first to admit that U.S. isn't perfect, and they could do without that chip on their shoulders. Uh, I, I, I do wish in some ways the average U.S. citizen was a little more uh, apprised of the global stage rather than just assuming everything works like it does in America. <laughs> but I kind of think we could argue strongly that Linus doesn't suffer from that problem and he's not going to suddenly become all Californicated America just because he signed some piece of paper. <laughs> it's, so well, if, if you were going to, a piece of paper wouldn't make a difference one way or another. Yeah, it, it, you know, and honestly, he's been out. he's been living in the States for, what, how, how many years has it's it been? 97. Yeah, it's been over a decade. If that was going to happen, it would have happened already. <laughs> it's just, this is... Yeah. Yeah, it, this is basically... It's actually close to where I live. Yeah, I mean, th this is basically, you know, I'd like the ability to vote in the country in which I live and have some say in the politics like that govern my day-to-day -day life, you know? <laughs> That's how I look up on this. And, you know, anybody who doesn't want that that uh, privilege in a place where it's allowed, it, it, there's something wrong with them. I mean, if I was primarily living in the UK, I'd probably apply for the same thing. Or, or, or Sweden or some, or whatever. It, anywhere where I have the right to vote and affect what is directly happening to me, and that's primarily where I'm living, I want that right. And you only get that right as a citizen. I don't know any country on the planet that will let you vote in their elections and dictate their policy if you haven't done the necessary steps to become a citizen. That's, I don't think that country exists at this time. <laughs> so... I, I, I think the real thing is because Linus is kind of the unofficial official mascot aside from Tux of open source in general and one of the concerns is because honestly if we look at it open source thrives a lot more outside the US than it does inside the US and one of the concerns there may be oh no we've lost our champion to the place where open source comes to die as somebody who lives inside that cornucopia of dead open source, I guarantee you it's not as dead as it seems to the outside world. It's just got more stuff to play with. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I, like, I, and I don't know what that is. I, I, I mean, open source is booming in Europe right now. What is it? Three of the governments are trying to switch over to off of Windows and other stuff. Uh, but at the same time, I read an article today about one government, and I can't remember which one, Finland, Sweden, I don't know, that uh, switched to Linux so many years ago, and they're actually having so many problems with it, they've switched back. Uh, well, I, 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 I wouldn't have switched to Linux back pre-05. Exactly, yeah. It's like Linux really just got to the point a few years ago. I mean, if we're honest... There were some major issues with going Linux as your main OS as recently as three years ago. I mean, you couldn't even do WEP2 reliably. 
and I don't want to be doing uh, WEP. I want to be doing WPA2 for my wireless connections. I want to be doing secure wireless connections, not connections a 10-year-old with a laptop can break. <laughs> Especially if I'm a government, <laughs> it's just, uh, it's, yeah, I mean, those, those things aren't issues anymore, but yeah, I, I know what you, they mean there. Um, well, that's, that's all that stuff. Now into the actual meat, or do we want to do Q&As first? Oh, uh, I guess since we're on it, we should get into the whole desktops thing, and since people were asking about it. Um, aside from the bug that's about ready to make me pick my computer up and throw it out the window, <laughs> uh, I love KDE, uh, but it's not always the most appropriate desktop environment to go with. If I remember, both of y'all use GNOME. Um, you know, before we really get into this, because we're going to have to really get into it, we're going to have to get into the next part, but I mean, A, we should point out I would say, what is it, there's six primary desktop environments right now? GNOME? They say that there's basically two or three that people mainly use. There's, I, I guess there's, there's, a, there's maybe six that people use a lot, but if, if, you, took a, if you took a survey, I, I, I think the margin... If you took a survey, the two 800-pound gorillas in the world are GNOME and KDE... And I'd be willing to bet between them they account for 90% plus of end-user systems. Um, but the others do have their place, especially on older or slower systems. Um, I would say the two that are largely comparable to each other by different philosophies on how the desktop should react are GNOME and KDE. But there's still stuff like... Um, uh, X-Face or E17, the, the one that goes by 50 billion names, and then I want to say LXDE. I can I can never remember. The na it's like, I don't. There's a way to pronounce that that sounds like L L I S or something, but I can never remember what it is. It's like some. It's like purposely misspelled or something. But um, and honestly, I've seen that growing lately because it's a lot like what KDE 3 used to be, but not identical, and that it's a lot less resource intensive. So if you have a really crappy system and you want that type of stuff, you might be better off to go that route. But the flip to that is always you don't have as much uh, application support. It's like most of the stuff is made either for GNOME or KDE. Usually in most cases, both, but not always. Um, uh, like I'm trying to think of some good examples of this is KDE only, this is GNOME only, but I'm not thinking of any off the top of my head. Uh, usually I've, I've had pretty good luck uh, going interactive or inter cooperative, I don't know what the word is for that, uh, working across platforms. Like I use Katie, Kate and Live in, uh, in GNOME and I've used, uh, shouldn't be using it, but I've used GTK Record My Desktop in uh, KDE. I know there is a QT Record My Desktop, just saying that it does work one way or the other. Right. Now as far as like applets and panels and stuff, it is still possible to intermingle them. It's possible to have the Plasma Desktop on GNOME. Uh, I'm sure it's probably possible to run GNOME Panel on KDE. It's just a matter of, is it going to look right? Is it going to crash? <laughs> Things like that. Well, you can do anything to a system if you don't care if it crashes. Right. You know, well, like I know there, was a, there was a distro, I, I'm not even sure if it's still out there, called Manhattan OS, that had the GNOME Panel, but they also had KDE's Plasma interface on top of it, so you could have the plasmoids and widgets and all those fun things. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's still out there. It wasn't that long ago that you reviewed it. Yeah, I, I just I, I looked for their website during the live show on Sunday night, and it was not there. I, from what I, someone told me is that the guy's moving, and it's uh, on hiatus or something. Like, so, like one week know. hiatus, or check us I, back mid next year know. hiatus. Because <laughs> hiatus can mean a lot of things with those exactly. types of projects. Um, well, you know, and really what this comes down to when you're picking the environment is what do you prefer? 
Uh, it's, I mean, if, if you if you don't like that that uh, plasmoids or widget style interface, you're not gonna like KDE. I personally love it because if implemented right, it's damn useful. Uh, the only down thing I would say about it is, unlike KDE three, uh, with KDE four going entirely widget based like that, there is a little bit of a learning curve for a novice user. Uh, and that you'll have to get used to it. Um, oh, I, I just thought of a good example of apps that are specific. Um, Armok and Rhythmbox is a good example of that. As far as I know, Rhythmbox does not run, there is not a KDE version of Rhythmbox, and there is not a GNOME version of Armok. Or am I wrong on that? Like, one moment while Jordan uh, researches the data. You know, uh, that's a little odd. Why does Amrox need my sequel? I'm not sure on that. Anyway, continue, please. I'll, I'll sit here and, and wait for it to download. <laughs>